Still a better love story than Twilight. Better than Titanic? Like a nothing's better than Titanic. <laughs> with another episode of Curious Tales. Sorry about last week, but real life just kind of got in the way. We're here today. And somebody complained that we talked too much about our everyday life, so... Oh, no, we did a poll, and it was one person who said they like more serious things. But, uh, a little update on... <laughs> I'm going to go right into <laughs> it. do it anyway. Yeah. We put up the uh, little graves for Bush 1 and Bush 2 that we talked about in the last podcast. And the next morning, I go out there. Yeah, the whole thing has been torn down, and we have new pathetic little baby bushes. It was so sad. We still need to put up decorations We're going to put the decorations up around the bushes and on the gate. Yeah, take that. <laughs> You took down my decorations in less than 24 hours. In less than 12 hours, even. I think it might have even been less than six hours. They were like, oh, okay. Oh, they were like, <laughs> it was a whole thing. So today we are going to be telling a love story. But, halt, today's curse word is brought to you by the letter C, Chrome Dome. Ah, uh, Yes. Because we were told that Tonky Hat was not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so today's word is going to be Chrome Dome, which means a bald person. Yes. Which is appropriate. Chrome Dome. You'll understand that later. What time period was this from? Uh, the 1940s. This takes place in the late 1940s. And your curse word is brought to you from the 1940s. Yep. So we did our research, we man. We did do some research. Okay. And y'all may or may not also hear me use the word mother trucker because I really like mother <laughs> trucker. <laughs> but that's uh, next week's. No. No. Oh. No. I don't know. So today we are talking about the Lonely Hearts Killers. Sounds like a game show host. Lo the Lonely Hearts were actually. Okay, they were kind of like online dating, except way before online dating. It was newspaper articles. And you could do like a Lonely Hearts column where it goes, this guy seeking girl or something oh, like that. so it's like today's day and age when you swipe left or swipe right. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the dating apps the that dating we have apps. today. Yeah. No, not to be confused with the Lonely Heart Killer, who was someone else entirely. But this is... This uh, is plural. Plural, yes. Multiple. So back in the 40s, you had Martha Beck and Raymond Fernandez. They were a couple who preyed on vulnerable women by entering these Lonely Heart ads. A throuple? No, a couple. But it's a well, man and a woman and another woman who is the victim. Yes, but she often pretended to either be his sister or his sister-in-law. So not a throuple. It's not, no, not a throuple. So I'm just going to dive right in there. Okay. You're like, shush. <laughs> but Raymond, Fernanda, Raymond Martinez Fernandez was born on December 17th in 1914 in Hawaii. His parents were both Spanish. But they had moved to Hawaii at some point. When he was still very young, they moved to Bridgeport, Connecticut. His father was a bit cruel. And for some reason, he seemed to focus more on Raymond. Okay, so he was a real chrome dome, one might say. You might say that, but I'm unsure whether he had hair. <laughs> he probably was a chrome dome in his later years. He would refuse to school Fernandez. And would force him to do demeaning work. 
like around the house. Like um, chores, regular chores. But probably like the worst kinds of chores. What are the worst kinds of chores? <laughs> Why do you do this? To me? <laughs> Just wondering exactly what are the worst kind of chores? Dishes? No, I imagine probably like, you know, dealing with literal like horse. Wait, pieces. were they on a farm? Did you say a farm? If you had let me finish, you would know. I'm sorry. All right. Well, his father would mo would force him to do the most demeaning work. When he was 16, Fernandez and two other boys stole chickens. The other boys' fathers paid bail, but Fernandez's father refused, and he was in prison for two months. So, like a good dad. If you steal chickens, my parents would have left me in jail. So far, I'm liking the dad. Makes him do dishes and tells him he can't get out of jail because what he did was illegal. They family moves to Spain at some point where the father becomes a mayor of a small town in the Granada Providence. I'm not going to even attempt to butcher the name of the town. Here, I'll attempt it. Okay, that's the name of the town. It's like an O with a little thing above it, so... Orgiva? Or Orgiva. Or I'm Giva. going with Orgiva. A small town in the Granada Providence. If I butchered that... Please let us know. So Raymond gets a job working at an ice cream shop, an ice cream vendor. Cool. He also works on his uncle's farm. So it sounds like the dad was a good dad who made his kid do chores and worked really, really, really hard to give his son a really good life by being a mayor. I mean, that's a pretty upstanding life. I'm not seeing anything wrong yet. Okay, well... To be quite honest, Raymond is actually a pretty normal guy. At the age of 20, he gets married to a woman named... Incarnation. Robles. Incarnation. In okay. At the age of 20, he gets married to a woman by the name of Incarnation Robles, and they wind up having four children together, whom he all abandons later on in life. Oh, that's sad. Raymond's a dick. Not yet. <laughs> He serves... I mean, wait. Raymond's a chrome dome. Not yet he's not. Just wait. <laughs> Hang on to your chrome. <laughs> I don't know. Is Jake a bad word? <laughs> you can leave yes. all of that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, that, that, that's, a, that's a bad word. Oh, okay. But a uh, guy's name is Dick. He's a real Richard. He's a real Richard. Okay, continue. So, during World War II, he served in the Spanish Merchant Marines... He was also part of British intelligence. Okay, so maybe he's not a Richard. He he fought in the war. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, by all accounts, he is an ice cream vendor who is now a World War II soldier, and he's actually got a pretty decent life. After the war, he decides, in December of 1945, he decides to seek work in the United States. Um, he'll make better money. If you guys hear anything in the background, that's just the cat meowing. We, Sorry. We locked him out of the room and he's just having none of it. Continue. It is this decision to go to the United States. Let's just say it's a fateful choice that puts him on a path he never would have dreamed. The Titanic? <laughs> <laughs> no. That was 1914. Ironically, the year he was born. No. After boarding the ship, a hatch falls on his head, fractures his skull, causes severe damage, and injures his frontal lobe. Which, for That's you- That's not a good thing. No, the frontal lobe is what controls- personality. Yeah, it basically it's what makes you you. It leaves him bald and with a dent in his head. Also, if you get a lot of frontal lobe damage, there like even if you have like a stroke in the frontal lobe area, you can actually become quite violent. Have a bit of a temper where you wouldn't normally have had a temper. You would be surprised the amount of serial killers that actually have had head injuries. Huh. Maybe we'll touch base uh, on that in another episode. I think John Wayne Gacy was even one of them. Was he? I have no idea. You guys yeah. let us know. Uh, so yeah, we will definitely have to talk about head injuries and violent behavior in serial killers at some point. So he spends a year or thereabout in the hospital. 
Oh, just dang. recovering. I mean, it was a seriously bad head How injury. How heavy was this hatch? I have no idea, but it's a metal hatch. Did it leave a dent? It left a dent. I said that. Oh, I'm, it left I got him, stuck on the frontal lobe. I'm sorry. It left him bald with a dent in his head. The man was a real chrome dome after that. Oh. Literal and figurative. And he wore um, a toupee. Okay. He gets released from the hospital. And already, immediately, he shows the change in his personality by stealing clothes. And nobody thought that was weird. Did well, he get caught stealing clothes? Yeah, he got caught stealing. And they didn't look at his, his record and go, he just got out of the hospital. He had a brain injury. Maybe he needs to go back. No, he's sentenced to a year in jail in Florida. This is where things go really weird. While in prison in Florida, he has a roommate. This roommate introduces him to voodoo. Hypnotism, voodoo? yeah, voodoo, hypnotism, and black magic. He really takes to voodoo and black magic. And black magic. And he honestly is convinced it gives him power over women to make them irresistible to his charm. Okay, so he takes voodoo in a way that would be bad for those who actually practice voodoo. He makes a bad name for those who practice voodoo. Basically, yes. Which is not what voodoo is supposed to do. No. It's after this that he starts a life of crime. He will answer Lonely Heart ads mm -hmm. and he'll prey on women taking their money, and then leaving them. So in 1947, this is two years after the head injury, he meets Lucille Thompson. She's a divorce cook who runs a boarding house with her mother in New York. He moves into the boarding house and becomes a tenant, and the two start a relationship. In October of 1947, this is just bizarre. Okay. So he's in a relationship with this divorced woman the lucille girl lucille right? lucilla lucilla okay lucilla <laughs> they go to spain on vacation okay well isn't he from spain well he was originally his parents were spanish yes so he introduces his lover to his wife and four children the one that he hasn't seen in like two years, years. Mm -hmm. the ones that he basically hasn't seen hi in honey years. i'm home and i brought my girlfriend <laughs> Basically. No, don't do that. So what did the girlfriend whose name I cannot remember? Oh, she was angry. She was like not livid. And the wife? You know, I do not know what the wife's response was, but the wife probably got the better end of the deal by just being abandoned by him. I'm just saying. Oh, he abandoned her again. Oh, yeah. He, he introduced her to his girlfriend and then was like, bye again? Mm-hmm. Rude. I know. It's what horrible. What if they just met each other on the street accidentally? Like, he had no intention of meeting up with her. Honestly, I couldn't find. It's just the various sources say that he introduced her, and I'm like, <laughs> you're a real chrome dome, aren't you? <laughs> you're <not. laughs> Look, I know you had a head injury, but seriously, do. <laughs> it is never a good idea to introduce the lover to the wife. Never. Obviously, she is angry and they have a fight. Right. Um, basically, I'm just going to call her Lucy. Okay, Lucy. Basically, Lucy threatens to return back to the U.S. alone without him. Well, she's found dead the next morning in her hotel room. What? Mm -hmm. The girlfriend winds up dead? The girlfriend is wound up because dead. Because she threatened to leave him? Was it an well, accident? or The was cause it... of death is identified as a heart attack caused by gastroenteritis, which gastroenteritis is basically inflammation and aggravation in your gastrointestinal tract. Really bad gas? No, um, gastroenteritis was kind of a more generic term for things. I do not honestly know if gastroenteritis can actually cause a heart attack, to just be quite honest. If you guys know whether or not that's a thing, um, let us know. Very curious on that Oh, one. it's going to get even more curious because he returns back to New York with a forged will, naming himself as her sole heir. So Are we sure he didn't kill her? It's highly... Will. It's, 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 it's likely that... Wait. He, she was one of his earlier victims. Was the was the will stating it was his wife? No, the will states that he is her sole heir, meaning he inherits the boarding the boarding house and all her money. 
And nobody questioned this? Apparently not. She didn't have anybody to qu- Well, I guess- Well, she has a mother. Okay. But he kicks her out later. Okay. Yeah. And the mom doesn't question it? The mom doesn't have much recourse of what to do. The will is legal binding and they have no way of proving otherwise because she died overseas. I guess that would make a difference. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely very hokey. Yeah, and it is definitely very, very suspicious. Very suspicious. Um, in all likelihood, my opinion, he totally killed her. Legally. <laughs> Legally, it's not one that he's tried for. Okay, got you. That's where we're going to leave off Raymond. Okay. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the other half of this love story, Martha Beck. Okay. Martha Beck was born Martha Jewel Seabrook in May 6, on May 6, 1920 in Milton, Florida. She was, she was an obese child. Okay. They said that it was a glandular disorder, but that was an older, timey term to try to understand why a person might be obese or okay. overweight. Like, oh, oh, if she has a glandular disorder, that's why she's big. She said during her trial that around the age of 10 or 11 that she was sexually molested by her brother. Well, that's not good. Her mother did not react well to these accusations of rape on Martha's part. In fact, she blames Martha. She What? Gets, she blames Martha and says that she um, was at fault. Wait, she how must have old t- was Martha? 10 or 11. Ten-year-olds don't normally have the mindset to lie about that sort of thing. No, not really. No, never. (laughs) I mean, so... How can she just, like... I'm sorry, continue. No, it happens more often than you would think, you know? And it's... Okay. I mean... We're we're not going to go into a rant. (laughs) That is a whole thing that we could just continue on with. That's another Um, episode. (laughs) So basically, her mother was a real chrome dome and reacted really horribly and even beat her. Oh my, no. Because of it. No. Um, Who is this woman? Her mother was apparently very domineering. Shame. Shame on her. No kidding. So she's also, because of the fact that she's large, mm-hmm. she is obviously made fun of in school and teased. And just kids can be cruel. She generally just had a horrible childhood. Psychologically, of course, this leaves her very much in a position to be in a more vulnerable kind of state. I don't know. Also with mental, not mental, also with physical abuse coming from the parent, it also puts her in a more violent state. And on top of that, she's not believed. So it puts her in a very defensive, violent state. You're not wrong. So she runs away as a teenager. I wouldn't blame you. Um, She eventually makes her way to California. She has gone to school to learn to be a nurse. Oh, good for you. So she had a hard time finding work. A few places I read said that for a while she worked as a mortician's assistant. Basically kind of helping to prepare the bodies for burial. That's kind of a cool Um, job though. You don't hear a lot of like mortician assistants. Yeah. But eventually she gets a job at a military hospital. It's here she meets a man. At the heart of this poor lonely girl she just really wants to fall in love. She just wants to find a man, she loves to read romance novels. Okay. Um, or romance stories, you know. She just, she loves those. Right. And, um... A lot of women do. Yes. And, but, I mean, she just, she just, she wants to find... True love. True love. That Prince Charming who can just help take everything and solve all her problems. That does not exist. But continue. But still, she tries. She tries. So she meets this man, and they begin a relationship. Okay. Well, she becomes pregnant. Oh, well, wait, are they married? No, they're not married. No, they just not. met. That's not good. Rather than marry her, he tries to kill himself. <laughs> oh my god, that's so horrible. I don't know why I laughed. But... I, I know, it's like, he survives. 
Okay. He survives his suicide attempt, but she never sees him again. He yeets it right on out of there. I mean, wouldn't that have been better than, like, put her through I know. a suicide attempt? Just yeet it out. I mean, they're just made... Yeet. <laughs> You're already bad enough for yeeting. Let's not there, add the suicide attempt. There may attempt. have been some other psychological problems going on with him. I mean, bear in mind, she's working in a military hospital, either right in the middle or right at the end of the war. Yeah. It's somewhere in the middle of World War II, so he's probably not in the best mindset. Trying to kill yourself is never a good reaction to, I'm pregnant. I mean, trying to kill yourself is never a good reaction, period. It's never a good reaction to But, I mean, else. I imagine that would cause some sort of, like, distress in Martha. Is it Martha? Yeah, it's Martha. Yeah. It's some sort of distress in Martha's mindset, you know? That's, that's horrible to go through. Well, she moves back to Florida, and she tells people she's a widow. Okay. That her husband died overseas. And in 1944, she gives birth to her daughter. Um, I've read places that her daughter's name was Carmen. Oh, that's cute. I've also read that it, it was something else, but I'm going to go with Carmen. Okay. So she gives birth to her daughter. She winds up getting another job at another hospital. And it's here that she meets Alfred Beck. Okay, who's Alfred Beck? Her husband. Oh, and she's okay, Beck. she does marry. So she does get married. Unlike the last guy, he marries her after he gets her pregnant. The marriage only lasts six months. I, I couldn't exactly find the reason that the marriage ended. I don't know if he cheated or what exactly happened, but Maybe just I did apart. read somewhere that he may have already been married. Okay, but you couldn't find but definitive proof. I, I wasn't, I couldn't find 100%. And either way, though, the marriage falls apart at, while she's still pregnant. Right. Well, she gives birth a to while herself. while she's still pregnant. And yeah. she gives birth again by herself? Oh, Martha, I yeah, feel for you, Yeah, she gives girl. birth to a little boy. Oh, that's awful. Um, I could not really find his name. Okay. This leaves Martha a single mother with two children. A little girl and a little boy. So around this time, she develops an alcohol problem. Okay. I would too. I'm well, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's understandable why she would. So yeah, she after literally two had failed relationships. She literally had a baby in 1944 and another one in 1945. She had two children back to back and was probably suffering from some postpartum postpartum depression. Yes. Or at least some depression. Or at least depression. Because, I mean, she's had one guy who's literally like, I would rather die than the be your husband. And another one who's like, yeah, this is never going to work. And she just really wants to find her Prince Charming. So in 1947, a co-worker, as a joke, puts out an ad in a Lonely Hearts column. Uh, was it a close co-worker? Do you know? I have no idea. So it could have been a cruel joke, or it could have been like a really good friend who cared about her. Like, because I could see like, I don't know, one of my best friends doing that, or my mom, or you know, somebody close to me doing that because they were concerned about my single life and stepping in when they shouldn't have. All I've been able to find was that it was a cruel joke. Okay. Cruel joke. Well, then that's horrible. However, it had one response. Oh, okay. Raymond Fernandez. Oh, Chrome wait. Dome. Chrome Dome. Oh, no. Chrome Dome. Martha, stay away from Chrome Dome. Chrome Dome, not good for you. So in December of 1947, no. Raymond starts writing to Martha. No. And shortly before Christmas, he came to visit her. No. <laughs> so... In one documentary that I watched on this, it said that Martha told friends later on that the sex was the best she'd ever had. I bet it was, but don't do it. <laughs> but they're only together for two days. That's it? He realizes she doesn't have anything worth him trying to steal. She's not... She has no money. She has no There's money. There's no point in trying to She's kill her. She's a single mom with... <laughs> She's a single mom with two kids. There's no point in trying to kill her and then steal a bunch of her stuff. And she doesn't put have her, anything. Put himself in a will. So. Bye. See ya. He literally leaves in the middle of the night. Like I said, bye. See ya. So. He Martha, left her in the middle of the night? He, he didn't even stay.
stay and say goodbye like that was fun. He just leaves. Martha, however, is in love. Of and course. Martha continues to write it. He tells her, you know what? I think you may have misinterpreted my intentions because, you know, the sex was very confusing about his intentions. <laughs> I mean, she continues to write him. She continues to write him, and he tries to let her off. He left her in the middle of the night. Martha, what are you doing? She's a desperate woman. However, it's a, he tries to let her off. Easy. And he tries to basically say, you're misinterpreting my intentions and whatnot. And she basically sends him a letter saying that she's going to shove her head in an oven and kill herself. Wait a second. Hold and up. Time time out, Martha. Let's let's have a conversation. Did that work for you when boyfriend number one tried it? No. Just just move on. Just move on. Well, I guess that his frontal lobe isn't entirely damaged because Wait, it worked. He invites, <laughs> he invites her to come visit. Okay, I take back everything I just said. <laughs> you go, Martha. <laughs> he invites her to come visit. No. <laughs> I know. Around this time, she loses her job at the hospital. So she sees this as a sign. She just packs up everything. Her two little children, so they're probably around two and three. Oh, they're so young. They're really, really young. And she literally packs up her children and heads to New York. She just shows up on his doorstep. And Raymond is like... Well, he just invited her over, didn't he? He did. But she's just like, okay, I'm going to move there now. Was it an invite to, like, come visit, or was it an invite to come stay with me? It was an invite to, like, come visit. Uh, I think you got your wires crossed, Martha. Well, he kind of looks at her, and at this point he doesn't really still want her because she's broke. Right. With kids. With kids. He didn't even keep his kids. So he tells her, okay, you can stay, but the little boy and the little girl gotta go. No. So she literally abandons her two and three-year-old at the Salvation Army. For, wait, 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 wait. She spent two years with one child, three years with one child, two days with this other guy. How is he over the child? The sex was really, really good. It's, it's the her child. It's his voodoo penis. It gives him power over women. No. Keep up. It's not a thing. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Apparently it did. Somehow, I'm not entirely sure, but the children wind up eventually with her mother. Okay, well, that's good. I mean, yes. I, no, wait, that's bad. Her it's mother probably is horrible. Yeah, but it's better than what's going to happen. Raymond is just kind of like, whoa, you like abandoned your kids. For me. For me. And he kind of starts to think, maybe this could work. Raymond, let her go. So Raymond. Did not let her go. Tells her everything. He reveals that he's bald, shows her the dent on his head, and tells <laughs> He's trying to get rid of her so bad. <laughs> he really is. And he tells her that I prey on women. I answer lonely heart ads in order to take their money and whatever else I can from these women. And Martha's like, cool. I can be your sister. No, Martha, run away. Get away. Go back to your kids. You were doing so great. You, uh, had, a, you had a job. You had two kids. See, that's the interesting thing. Okay, so when you take a serial killer like John Wayne Gacy or Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy, they're singular. But when you take a killer couple or a partnership, it is literally a chance type thing. Like if these two people had never come together. Okay, so I honestly think Raymond probably was already murderer. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that Martha necessarily would have become one. Okay. But they come together and now they become this serial killer duo. Now it is very possible that Lucille, Lucy? Lucille. Lucille. Was the girlfriend that Lucille, died, right? Lucilla. Lucilla. I'm gonna say that Lucilla could have been an accident that he then covered up to get money and then went, oh, this works. 
Like, it really could have been. He could have given her something that we don't know about. It is entirely possible, and, then and it went, could have triggered a heart attack. Yeah, and then went, oh, crap. An and, OD, and she's older. Yeah, it, it could have been something that was an accident, because that also didn't really seem very premeditated. I mean, you're not going to invite your girlfriend to your wife if you plan on killing her. Right, and then it's like maybe once she's dead, he's like, oh. Well, so, opportunity, so he forges a will. So maybe at this point, neither of them have killed at this point? I I don't know. See, we don't know whether or not he actually killed Lucilla or not, but it certainly is suspicious. Uh-huh. But it's not definitive. It is possible that maybe he even would have never killed. It is. It's entirely possible. At this point, they're in the boarding house. They literally the kick... The one that they got from Lucy? The one that he got from Lucy. And they literally kick Lucy's mother out. Oh, that's sad. I don't actually know where she winds up, but I, I assume... Maybe she had relatives or yeah, something. It's possible. Or a friend to stay it's with. It's possible. So... I hope she didn't wind up on the street. Her they start... Thing. So they start looking for their next prey. And in February, Raymond goes from New York to Virginia to marry Esther Hinn, who's a retired school teacher. Martha refuses to let him go alone. Okay. So she pretends to be his sister-in-law. Okay, so what I've been able to tell in my research is that Martha is extremely jealous of the women that they preyed on. Okay. And every time that Raymond tries to consummate the marriage, she interrupts. She does things like she'll have conversations and keep them up really late. <laughs> It just, or, or even go so far as to climb into bed with them because she's like, oh, I can't sleep by myself. Why? Because that's her man. And the women just let her do this. Well, no, they get real angry and that's what leads to some of the murders. Okay. So the murders are kind of circumstantial. But somewhat. We'll get into it. Somewhat. But we'll get into some of the nitty gritty next week. Yeah. They, three of them wind up coming back to the New York boarding house. Esther is reluctant to allow Raymond to take out life insurance on her. Smart Esther. She won't put her teacher's retirement in his name either. Good job, Esther. Way to go. I'm clapping for you. So the tenants of the boarding house start talking to Esther. And they start talking about Lucila and her mysterious death. Oh. And how they're a little... Concerned? Yes. Esther literally uh, ex nays the whole relationship and flees. Okay. She actually manages to survive and oh, get out. Oh, good job for Esther. We love a survivor. She later on fights to recover money and property from Raymond that she did give him. Okay. Around this time, somebody has come up to Raymond and go, isn't it cute? It's yours. Well, we know how these two feel about kids. Right. They flee New York. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, bye! <laughs> they sell the boarding house. Okay, for extra money. For extra money. They sell the boarding house, and he flees because he ain't gonna be no baby daddy. <laughs> of course not. And um, they move to Green Forest, Arkansas. It's here that they answer a correspondence to Myrtle Young. Myrtle and Raymond are married on August 14th, 1948. I guess this is not gonna be as happy as Esther. No. Probably not. Uh, the couple go to Chicago for their honeymoon. Oh. Martha tags along. Oh. Just like she did with Esther, she does everything she can to keep the marriage from being consummated. She just is going to stop that sexy time. <laughs> She's going to be like, no, we're going to talk till it's four o'clock in the morning. And then if you guys want to do some more, I can't sleep by myself. Exactly. Now you have to understand. I this had a bad dream. You have to understand this is a woman who is probably 250 to 300 pounds. I mean, I'm a large, I'm on the larger side. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite that large, but I mean, just like in the middle between you You're and the guy that's your any husband. You're not going to have sexy time in between her. Myrtle basically is angry and frustrated because this is my husband. I would really like to consummate my marriage. Raymond, your sister has got to go, or I'm gonna go. Good job, Myrtle! <laughs> well, 
Not good job, they Myrtle. They put Myrtle on a bus. Drugged up on barbiturates. Oh, not good job, Myrtle. Mm. Please tell me she's okay. She dies oh, on the she, bus. She's not okay. Mm -mm. She died on the bus. Um, Now, she either OD'd on the barbiturates, mm -hmm. which often given to people to help them sleep, but you can get addicted to barbiturates also. So do you think it was an accidental death? It, like, they meant to drug her up and but, then put her on a bus? It's highly likely that they meant to just drug her up. But here's the thing. Martha's a nurse. She would know the correct pill dosage... To give somebody. To give someone to knock them out. I honestly think that... Martha got jealous. Martha got jealous and Martha gave her too much on purpose... Either to make her really, really sick... Maybe not necessarily to kill her... But definitely to punish her. Just to get her away from her man. Exactly. So she dies on the um on the bus. Oh, that's sad. Sorry. Is her name Myrtle? Her name is Myrtle. So now you have two mysterious deaths. Very mysterious deaths. And they almost look natural. They almost look natural. So maybe he did do it. So I'm Ray, still stuck on Lucille. I'm sorry. I know you know you're fine. Um, because it is very suspicious. Raymond and Martha managed to get four thousand dollars out of the deal, which is like seventy four thousand dollars in twenty twenty money. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. That is a lot of money. So in December of nineteen forty eight. So this is basically like one year after they've known each other. I live in twenty twenty. I'm sorry. I live in twenty twenty. How do people have seventy four thousand dollars just laying around? For them to steal? It was $4,000. That's just like with inflation, it would have been equal to $74,000. I don't know how people have $74,000. I have $4 in cash right now. I mean, I have like 20 bucks in my bank account at the moment. <laughs> I don't know. I bought food, so I don't remember how much I have now. So in December of 1948, Raymond starts writing 66-year-old Janet Fay. He's using an alias of the name Charles Martin. They bond over their shared religion. He's making the whole thing up, but she's a very devout religious woman. Okay. On January 1st, 1949, Raymond and Martha arrive at Janet's house in Albany, New York. They claim they lost their wallets and need a place to stay. Now, it should be noted, Janet Fay is the only one that they are actually charged for murder. Oh, okay. So this is not going to be happy. So it is not going to be happy, but I'm going to leave everybody hanging. Oh, dun, dun, dun. So we will talk about what happens to poor Janet Faye and their last two victims next week. Well, that was fun. Right? I liked that. That was an interesting, like, I really feel bad for Martha, but I, I also kind of don't like her at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> just wait till I get to their final words. I mean, I get you're not supposed to like the serial killer, but I was surprised that I felt so connected with her at the very beginning, you know? Well, okay, so here's the thing. He had a head injury. He really seemed like he had he, his life together. He did. He actually, he, he's like, okay, he's going to America to try to make more money, and maybe he intended to bring his family over, but he has... This horrible head injury. And to think if and he it, didn't ever go on that ship, none of this would have or happened. Or if he had moved a little quicker or had to been in that particular place at that particular time. Then we wouldn't have this love story. Exactly. Martha would never have had a reason to become a murderer. Or leave her kids. Or leave her kids. I mean, she still would have been sad and miserable. It is actually really interesting, though, because they actually love each other. Yeah. Martha and Raymond do. Well, I think... I think it's pretty it had to have been and i'm not a believer in love at first sight but i think for martha it was love at first sight if you're willing to give up your children for this relationship of two days no kidding it, plus it had, also letters and correspondence right but it had to have been love at first sight totally for raymond it was a well she gave up her kids she must really like me yeah. And he tries everything he can think of to actually get her and to... He... She tries everything he can think of to dissuade her. He even tells her the truth. And it's like, okay, cool, let's do this together. And you must think that he loves her or at least somewhat cares about her. I mean, more so than the other women because he lets her just 
come in and get into the bed between the woman he's trying to to seduce. Oh yeah, and, and he lets her basically block them from consummating any marriages. This is true. I mean, that's a lot to put up with. If you're you're trying to to do something, and this woman is out there literally foiling your plans in front of you and you still keep her around he she probably failed on some part sometimes for the most part yeah that's an interesting dynamic a very very interesting case and i cannot wait until next week when we get down to the nitty-gritty and the murders isn't that the nitty gritty? That is the nitty gritty. It's the murders. Murder, murder, murder. Murder, murder, murder. All right, everyone. I'm Missy. I'm Micah. And don't forget to find us on Instagram and Facebook, Facebook and Twitter. And of course, we're on Spotify. When we get a few more episodes, maybe we'll be on some other places too. But in the meantime, bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to the little follow button. It's a follow button. Follow us everywhere. Follow, 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 follow. Bye. Bye.